Bir hava mı bak? Allah mı Allah mı? Yahova mulak ya mey rakis Yahova gadolla makeryan tios Yahova eranai Yahova elohim Kurios tios penta kreta Kurios tios pestos Elda et Yahova yel emuna Yahova Ibas Leon Kurios Otios, o pente creta. Baslios, baslion, kai curios, curion. Jehova da bar halal. Elohim da bar halal. Jehova Elohim, gadol, gadol, kebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon, isun ton curion. Curion, imahagion, pente creta. Gadol, gadol, kebura. Yehova Ishmael Kam, Yehova Shema, Yel Nakum Yehova, Yel Nakum Yapa. Natsak Israel La Shaker, Gava Gava, Triembos Yehova, Isus Christos Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol Gebeva. Moraros Nasa, Elohim Elohim, Ileila Shalut. Yehova Malak, Yehova Malak, Olam Olam Ad, Yehova Eleheno, Yehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Geber. Zoan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikaesune, Enisus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebuba, Yehova Ihe Elohim, Yehova Ihe Elohim, Ile Lai Shalut, Jesus Christos, Yehova Malak, Gadol Gadol, Gebuba, Derek Emunabakar, Mishfat Shawa. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing how great is the counsel of the Lord of God and how excellent is His working on this earth. When the people of Jews rejected the true God of God, He comes to now work out the same plan with the Gentiles who will be in the process of becoming Lord's plan on this earth. Moreover, in the church age, making every ordinary believer to look upon the honor which Christ our Lord of God receives and makes them also to be with him 
as he said this great passage in John chapter 17 in the great prayer of verse number 24 because he said I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory such a great wonderful in counsel excellent in working Lord God is our shepherd the illustration between Abraham and Sarah in the case of Potiphar, the wife of Pharaoh. Pharaoh looks upon to take Sarah to be in his harem, but Lord God warns Pharaoh to say that she belongs to Abraham and the plague which comes upon them. Such a wonderful Lord God we serve. When we are mindful about his word, about his thoughts. He said the same thing in Proverbs chapter 12, in verse number 20, at 21 he said, There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. There will be no evil happening to the people who are absolutely right. The same thing what he says over here in Psalms chapter 10, wherewith he says, it's not in Psalms chapter 10, it has to be in Psalms 104, in verse number 6, saying that, in 7, at thy rebuke they fled, at the voice of the thunder they hasted away. Such a great protection he gives to us when we are truly serving Lord of our God. And there will be no evil that could happen upon us. The example between Abraham when he makes his wife to be as a sister, Sarah, and comes to that Egypt. And then Pharaoh thinks he can make, he can make her to be in his harem. But Lord God the Father speaks to that Pharaoh in the night and they get plagued. Such a great Lord of our God we serve when we are really able to protect his even his every single iota and carrera. Not even to let go even a single iota and carrera of the Bible, but diligently take great care in learning and understanding the word of Lord God. He would really teach us marvelous things with his protection. And those who are able to walk upright in his fellowship, they will really enjoy the true baptism of Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by putting on Christ upon them. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory in learning his pale wonders of the truth. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of his word. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for the great privilege of Lord to learn the truth. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten, to challenge and to bless us by the message that you have prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. And as we study them, O Lord, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and challenge us for your glorious purpose, to behold your glory on this earth as we can make it up to be in the heaven as well as John 17, 24 teaches to us. So, Father, being grateful for this privilege as we study in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to learn your mind, we pray the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to challenge, to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The great prayer which Christ, our Lord, our God, prays for us in John chapter 17, which he emphasizes to behold his glory. And here we have to say that, Father, as to those whom you have given me, I desire that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. So at the close of John chapter 17, the two desires of peculiar sweetness 
both in themselves and in the connection with each other the one verse is found in 24 and the other is found in verse number 26 in the former the lord desires for his own that they may be with him where he is but absorb for what the end he would say that that they may behold my glory which you have given me in looking forward to the blessedness of being with christ do we not often think of that only which directly concerns ourselves at we shall always find that our fullest blessings is linked with christ's glory this when apprehended gives real enlargement to the heart the lord has just said thy glory which you have given me i have given them but he does not stop there it is not enough for christ that we should share the glory which he has earned and the father has given to him as man nor it is enough for the heart that knows christ will it be nothing to see him acting in the plenitude of his power in subduing all things in re- in reigning over all things in dispensing peace and bringing in everlasting blessing and receiving in return the glory and honor due to his blessed name surely he counts upon the affections of our hearts in this so nay more the very glory he sets us in will be but the sphere where we may behold his glory given according to the father's love before the world was and to find our delight in it in all things he must have the preeminence so it will be in the day of glory second in revelation chapter 5 the elders no doubt enjoy the nearest place in this scene but it is not their own glory they celebrate but lord and savior jesus christ we see then that however near grace may bring us and however fully we may be blessed with and in christ we are never blessed on a level with him on the contrary our very nearness to him is as here expressed that we might behold his glory indeed this itself is an additional blessing and at the same time a witness to the grace that has fitted such unworthy feeble creatures for the enjoyment of such a display glorified with Christ and in nearness to him it will be our unspeakable delight to behold him shining out over the new creation according to the counsels of the father's love you know the new creation kinetesis according to the counsels of the father's love like the sun in the firmament throughout an endless day he will be the object for sight in that day even as now he is the object for faith so he says a word in passing as to how the lord uses the glory we are familiar with his words i have glorified thee on the earth but will it be the same in the glory when we hear the prayer father the hour has come glorify thy son and thy son may glorify thee he has no thought for himself and no desires apart from the father even as to the objects of his love he will not put forth his power apart from the father what a lesson for us that how often the day of prosperity proves too much for the saint but the lord jesus fills the throne of glory as perfectly as he had trod the path of humiliation seeing only and always the father's glory so we need to learn the same as the desire of the glory of father as he said in numbers chapter 14 in verse number 21 that the earth shall be filled with the glory of the lord god as he said the desire saying that as i live said the lord god so shall the earth be filled with the glory of lord god so dear brethren in order to be filled with the glory of lord god so that we can enjoy where lord god the father was so we shall be the first thing is we need to be baptized in christ in acts chapter 19 in verse 4 and 5 we look paul said john indeed baptized you with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him that was coming after him that is lord and savior jesus christ and when they heard that they were baptized to the name of the lord jesus so dear brethren here we need to look that with having to look what paul bought before the one whom john the baptist had pointed 
he bought lord and savior jesus christ so new light bought the new responsibility and so they were baptized to the name of the lord jesus so the passage over here which two keys principles of baptism because the first key over here which illustrates is that introduces us into a new position so the people of israel were also baptized unto moses as they passed through the red sea and were introduced to a new position on the earth as first corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 10 emphasizes those who submitted to john's baptism took a new position before god that of repentance for their sins at pentecost peter exhorted those who were convicted by his preaching to repent and be baptized so by doing so they took a new position of being saved from this perverse generation as acts 2 20 30, 38 and 40 teaches to us so here when paul says he says you are having to get into a new position and then he going to say that when pentecost peter exhorted them they were making up themselves to become as a new position being saved from this perverse generation because you need to behold the glory of god so the second principle what we illustrate is that john's baptism identified people with an attitude of heart called to be change of mind change of thinking repentance so thus it has been called the baptism of repentance but whereas christian baptism identifies people with a person that is the lord and savior jesus christ so in roman 6:3 he says speaks of being baptized into christ jesus so if you have been baptized then you have to be identified with lord jesus christ through his baptism so have you been baptized then you can behold the glory of the lord god the first thing new position and then he says the new identification the new position what apostle paul is emphasizing over here like the people of israelites they had in first corinthians 10:2 So John's position was John's baptism was able to give to a new position so that you can find repentance for their sins. So at Pentecost Peter exhorted those who were convicted by his preaching to repent and to be baptized. By doing so they took a new position of being saved from this perverse generation so they took a new position being saved. And when we come to the second principle what illustrates in Acts 19 it emphasizes verse 4 and 5 saying that attitude that's what your new identification and what it is repentance. So it is called to be the baptism of repentance. So the Christian baptism identifies people with a person called to be the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thus Romans 6 emphasizes that being baptized unto Christ Jesus. So when you want to behold the glory of Lord God the Father, your new position away from the separation of the world, your new identification, these are the two things which Christ our Lord our God gives to us. in that new identification you are having now a great place in Christ that is you have been uh, making up to be as baptized unto Christ Jesus because now christian baptism identifies people with a person that's what you have been called being identified with a person but many people don't realize that they have a new position and a new identification in Christ therefore we have been baptized in Christ though we have been baptized in the trinity that you know that your identification your baptism over here your new position as kainiketesis as heavenly citizens and your new identification that your thinking should be Christ because you have to behold the glory of Lord God the Father which he said as they have behold my glory in John chapter 17 in verse number 24 the same thing over here dear brother and if you can look he further emphasizes over here in john chapter 17 in verse number 26 as well he goes to teach saying that and i have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love way with her loved me may be in them and i in them what love the love of glorifying lord god the father so he said that they behold my glory how the word behold the word called to be theorio and the meaning of the word theorio is nothing but number 1 it is called to be raa which meant to say to give a great inspection a diligent in inspection the ability to see the perceive to convince and to have a vision by that we meant to say what make up your thought process to be renovated so that all of your lf energy is been associated with doctrine 
So the very first thing Ta'rio follows Ra'a with the word Kazak. The meaning of the word Kazak is nothing but your brethren build up a wall of fortification and day in and day out go back and dig and take the word of Lord God. We have to get into that glory to be behold. And you may ask, what is that glory? The glory is nothing but truth. What is the truth we have now? The Lord's mind being delivered for us. Have in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to learn. He's the only mentor. He's the only guide. He's the only teacher. Therefore, the Spirit of Lord God beareth witness with our human spirit that we belong to the children of the Most High in Romans 8.16. The word what we read over there as the word called to be children, it is called to be Technon. And who will be the people of Technon believer? They will be the people associated with Ben Elad. We read the word. And the meaning of the word Elad is nothing but they will be disciple orientation. They would love to make every thought into captivity for Christ. So that their body will get every vigor and valor of doctrine in them. So he says, Ben Elad. Every thought into captivity for Christ. That's what we have been called over here to do as the children. Because if you have been led by the Holy Spirit of God, that is what the very first primary thing which you would make upon this earth. You will be a disciple. Because you are called to behold the glory of Jehovah Elohim. And then he furthermore emphasizes for us, beholding the glory of Jehovah Elohim in John 17, 24. He says that you should have the vigor and valor or an ability to look beyond, the ability to pursue beyond. And what is that you have to pursue beyond? He says, your thought process to be renovated in comparison to the people of this earth. Because the people of this earth, what they're doing? We find the way example of what in Genesis, Lot did. You know, the people on the earth, what they're going to do, apart from the people where spirit can bear witness that these are belonging to the children of God. You know, this is what first the present Christendom has to look. If you don't, if you don't want to look upon the glory which has to behold in your life through the word of Lord God, then you can better make up your lives not to know these things. But if you really call to look upon the glory of Lord God the Father to be beholded in you, then you should look upon the things what Genesis chapter 19 looks upon in verse number 1 when it says, Loth was sitting in the gate of Sodom. So here you can understand that the way how the things pertaining to four steps that lead or make every man to the road of failure. When you're not having the glory of Lord God to be beholded, because you don't understand that what is a new identification in Christ in his baptism. You don't look that, you don't understand that. When you don't have that true identification in the Lord God, then quite obviously you will realize what a great failure of your life is on this earth. Because you don't know what is a new position, you will not understand what is a new identification. When you have been taken up into the new position, the things which are causing you to fail, not to look upon Christ, not to make up on your life to Christ, those things you'll make up a valuation over there. The same thing what we can find when they had a tussle of a fight in Genesis chapter 13. He said, Loth lifted up his eyes in verse number 10. And behold, all the plain of Jordan that was thoroughly watered, and Lot went to dwell in the cities of the plain and pitched tents as far as Sodom and the people of Sodom were wicked. You know, first you have to look. Why is that you're not able to behold the glory of Lord God and why it is that you're not able to be baptized in the name of my Christ or identification with Christ? Your new position, your new identification. When John the Baptist was saying it was suppression from the world and he says furthermore repentance change of your thinking change of your mind but now it is a new identification with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be the ultimate purpose of life on this earth it is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that will be the ultimate purpose that will be the ultimate goal 
If you don't have this ultimate purpose in the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you will never realize what is that which has been called over here, the four causes of failure. The four reasons of failure. Or the four steps of failure. Because, dear brethren, the very first step, he said, the word called to be having the wrong perspective. The Christians who don't have a true perspective of life, they always consider the wrong perspective. They are called to be like having a witness of David, the way how he has in First Samuel chapter 29 before the king Akish. He says to him, I know you are a upright man. I know you are a good man. I know there is no evil in you. And he says, I know you are a good man, and I know you are a messenger of Elohim, or the angel of Elohim. This is a testimony what a king gives when he goes into the process David to Egypt to have there to be escaped from Saul. You know, these things are very essential before the unbelieving world. What a testimony we have. But then too, he said, My captains are not favoring you to fight with me against your children Israel or against your people Israel. But I know what you are. You are an upright man. You are a good man. No evil is found in you. In First Samuel 29, in verse number 6 and following, you can look that. Because when they would say that he is a man who has killed, if Saul has killed thousand, he has killed tens of thousand, tens of thousand. That's the song they have. So they knew now who is David. When they find David in his army against Israel, they say, you cannot trust him. Now the king goes to give a witness. You know, they refined a lesson to teach that though you are being in your enemy's realm, that is, now he's with the people of this uh, Egyptians or this Philistines, whatever it could be, in that war of 1 Samuel 29. Though he's fighting against his people Israel, yet he said, I will be faithful and true for you. You know, here you can look upon the way how beautiful character every human being should have on this earth. Faithfulness to serve his master till to the end. Now that master looks upon his report and he says, he's an upright man, he's a good man. He doesn't have any evil. He's a good man, he's a messenger of Elohim. But my captains are not favoring you, David. He said, tomorrow morning you rise up and you go from here. You know, these things are very, very essential as a testimony, what we should have before we can have the failure in life. Like the way how Lord goes to look now, the four reasons, how he has failed, his spiritual failure, and has become to sit in the gate. Though we can find the word about Lord in Second Peter chapter 2 saying he was righteous, verses 7 and 8, but we know very well what was his failure. So the very first thing we look over here in Genesis chapter 13, saying that having a wrong perspective, and here we can look, Lot's first step towards failure came because he was not in communion with God. Therefore, he had a wrong perspective. The very first thing why you fail, you're having no communion with God. Therefore, in the churches we have been said, be breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If ever you walk, you walk in the Spirit. If ever you breathe, you breathe in the Spirit. These things are very, very essential for us. And people are not able to realize that. The very first perspective, what it has to be, communion with God. That's why he said on the fourth word on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? People may think X, Y, Z reasons, but the solid reason is that on the cross, up until that time, for judging of the sins when it's going to begin, he's been left alone. The great reason what we can look upon the standards. When Christ, O Lord of God, could say, Father, if it is thy will, remove this cup. And not my will, O Lord, let thy will be done. And here we can look and understand the things which have been said for us. He says, Lord, because 
and will be breaking up my communion with you. He doesn't want to let go even those three hours of fellowship on the cross. But God the Father and Lord God the Holy Ghost are so pure that they cannot look sin, so they leave him on the cross. He's been left over there to be judged, and now he prays, Lord, you behold my glory, what was there before the foundation of the world. Lord, make these people who are there with me may also behold the same glory. Tomorrow when you are entering into the presence of Lord God the Father, even Isaiah illustrates in chapter number 6. He says he's a man of unclean lips. Many great prophets in the past, they fall dead. The book of Revelation goes to give us heavenly visions to teach. How the 24 elders, they laid on their crowns before Lord God. And now he says the same cry on the cross, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. Give them a chance of repentance. Let them behold my glory. Therefore, he says in John 17, 17 and 18, emphasizing, The word is thy truth, and today people are not having time for the truth. The only one thing which could be more valuable for you on the face of the earth is the word of God. Therefore, we read Isaiah 28 in verse number 29, which he would say, emphasizing that, the things pertaining to Lord God, excellent in word, King, and wonderful in counsel. There also, if you can look upon those words, he emphasizes for any human being on the face of the earth, the standards of Bible doctrine, he would go to teach in very, very simple terms. First, make up the point to teach as disciple-oriented program. Because over here, when he would say, wonderful it is called as pale the meaning of the word pale is nothing but he wants you all to open up your mouth for discipleship program every pastor teacher to whom this gift has been given they would simply come first to teach discipleship program without discipleship program these are not at all the sent ones by lord god lord god the father hasn't sent them they have to be for discipleship program so, dear brethren, the very first thing he would say, wonderful, and varies in counsel. The word counsel over here is called to be yetsa. The meaning of the word counsel is nothing but no matter how much of the viewpoint of this life may put you into pressure, first have that great communion with God. You will have an upright relationship with God. Therefore, no pressure on this earth can destroy you. No pressure. Nothing of a pressure on this earth can destroy you. That's the word counsel. Therefore, he is wonderful in counsel. Pale etza. And the meaning of that meant to say what? He says, no matter what, maybe the pressure in the viewpoint of your life, open up your mouth to be disciples for Christ. That's very, very simple. Open up your mouth for discipleship in the Lord. Make up your viewpoint of life to get into the standards of Bible doctrine, no matter what, maybe the pressure on this earth. So, dear brethren, he said, he is pale etza, is wonderful in counsel. And today many people are not able to realize how much Lord God the Father is wonderful in counsel. And then he would say, excellent in working. The word excellent over here, dear brethren, it has been called as Gadol. And the meaning of the word Gadol is nothing but your brethren. He wants to erect a structure to make up your every thought in return, going and making disciples of all the nations. Therefore, he says, with authority. Upon your every thought, he wants to make up, to rise up the standards of excellent in counsel, excellent in working in the Lord God. But what we are looking today, dear brother, in our pulpits, we are not able to realize how much of the Lord's mind we have to teach. You don't have that communion with Lord God. But Christ, our Lord of God, on the cross, He says unto them, teaching to us very simple things, saying that, even a millionth of a breath of your second on this earth, do not be far away from the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because your prospect you will be wrong if you're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You will not understand the great wonders of the Lord's mind. Loth had a wrong perspective. 
When Christ, our Lord of God, said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds the out of the mouth of the Lord of God, he meant to say what you do require, bread also to read, but that doesn't mean to say that you have to labor for the food which perisheth. But you have to rather labor for the food which perisheth not. The very first thing, whenever, wherever you are involving in this life, every day, set a time, at least two hours, forty minutes, like the time of your tithe, Every day, set apart your time, at least two hours, forty minutes, in eternal value, which has great value for eternity. Set your time for those things. That's what beholding the glory of Lord God. He says, they have to behold my glory. The same thing what great one of Numbers 14, 21, he said, As I live, said the Lord God, the earth shall be filled with the glory of Lord God. And we do have lot many things to learn over here on this earth. Beholding the glory of Lord God on this earth. But today, dear brethren, many people are not able to behold the glory of Lord God. Why? Wrong perspective. If God the Father has given to survive for you on this earth, He knows how to provide you the food. When He's able to provide, when He said in Matthew chapter 6, look back and see upon the nature. Birds do not sow, animals do not reap. At He taketh care of even the single thing on this earth. As we read yesterday, comparison to Many, many great wonders of Psalms 104 in verse number 24 and 25, emphasizing the things pertaining to the one-third part of the land in comparison to the water, the insects, the animals, the outweigh. And few insects can easily make up an animal to be outweighed because such are the things what Lord God the Father has made. So your mouth has to be like Bible doctrine, but what you're making up your lives, you're making up to become like an open specular. Why? Because you don't understand the great pale wonders of his mind. Why? Prospectives are wrong. How can you be saying a Christian without a disciple? You know, many people today, they want to look upon and analyze the system of this body, like Deepak Chopra. Where would he would say, emphasizing that body is such and such. In every six weeks, the liver is going to become once again new. For every one month, the skin is going to become once again new. Everything they have. And he says, the software is inside and the outside is the hardware of this body. And he goes to say, there should be a programmer. And then he calls, who is that programmer? He calls that programmer is the spirit. And therefore, Christ, the Lord of God, said in John 6, 63, The words which I speak unto you, they are spirit. And what is going to program you? The word of God. Therefore, dust you are, dust you shall return. But the inner man, what he has given, that goes back to Lord God the Father. Why? Because man sinned and received that stage. If man wouldn't have sinned, there would have been no need for the standards of having Christ to come on this earth for saving us. That's what the promise we can find in Genesis 3.15. People may think he was being born on such and such reasons and the people may calculate many stupid things about the birth of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when it could be or how it could be. The birthday of Nimrod or this or that, we don't care on all those things. It's a festival of Hanukkah, dedication of light. Once again, it's a feast of dedication and a feast of dedication of light. Feast of light and feast of dedication, we have that. Once again, every day you have breath, today you think it's a birthday of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You have been identified yourself with Christ. And if you have been baptized in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then look that which is having eternal value, eternal perspective. Not the things of this earth. What it has to be as an eternal value, eternal perspective, that you think. That's what the first priority should be for you on this earth. Being baptized with Christ, what you have to do? Behold the glory of Lord God. Have by daily taking in the word of Lord God. So program your inner man by the Holy Spirit of Lord God, which goes to teach your human spirit. 
Therefore, the Holy Spirit of Lord God beareth witness with your human spirit that you are the children of Lord God. Have the word called to be Teknan, Ben Elad. What do you do there? You're going to make every thought into captivity for Christ as disciples your program. And today your hearts have to cross-check to look where are we? Are we really the true Christians in the Lord? If you are really a true Christian in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then for sure you have to first become a disciple unto the Lord. Without a discipleship program, you cannot be. First be faithful to the word of Lord God, then see the faithfulness of Lord God in your life. What the word of Lord God demands, you look. Every day, carry your cross. Every day, become the disciples of the Lord's mind. Every day, make it up to the things which have been said for you to be faithful, even in minute details, minute details. Every day, in the minute details. And what we are finding day by day, vanity of vanities, wrong perspectives. So dear brethren, looking upon the way of life with Lot, the four steps for his failure in the Lord, he says that first step toward failure came because he was not having communion with God. Today the church age believers are inexcusable if they are not in the breath by breath fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 emphasizes if ever you live you have to live in the Spirit. That meant to say what if ever you breathe you have to breathe in the Spirit. And then you have to walk, you have to walk in the Spirit, peripata or your affairs of your lives. So that you can be the fruit of light. We can be the fruit of the Spirit. Ephesians 5 9 talks about the fruit of light. Akatesune, Dikayasune, and Aletia. Righteousness and justice and truth. The fruit of spirit, you know, love, joy, peace. If ever you breathe, you breathe in the spirit. If ever you walk, you walk in the spirit. Your life is associated with the Holy Spirit. Your every communion, first thing, you break up communion with Lord God. You will be thinking you can be compromised with the world. And you can be a vessels of God. No way, dear brother. Compromising in the world, you cannot be vessels of Lord God. Let it be anything on the face of the earth. Dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, Compromising in the world, you cannot be vessels of Lord God. No chance at all. Though you may think such and such could be the reason, but the word of Lord God says in very, very simple terms, you cannot be. So, dear brethren, the only thing which can keep you alive, he said in John chapter 17, in verse 14 through 17, emphasizing it is the Bible. This great majestic book, well named to be the books of books, is not an ordinary book. It is the one outstanding unique book in possession of the entire human race. It has been read by increasing millions in hundreds of languages. It is the book of glory, for it has a glory which no other book in the wide world has, nor ever can have. It is the book of eternity, for it reveals what man by searching could never know. The decrees of a sovereign God made before the foundation of the world. It lifts the veil of eternity to come and reveals the destiny of mankind and the future manifestation of God as creator in producing a new heaven and a new earth. It is the book in which God comes down to man, even down into the deepest misery, sin and human helplessness to meet his need and to bring him back not into an earthly Eden but as a member of the family of God in the Father's house above. It is the book of power. If what Jeremiah said is done, thy words were found and I did eat them. If that blessed bread came down from heaven is taken and absorbed, it will give strength and power to live, to serve, to suffer and to die. It will guide and direct. It will wipe away tears away. Such a great doctrine Christ, O Lord our God, has given so that now you can be separated from the world. Don't compromise. 
if you're not separated from the world, if you're still a worldly Christian, you cannot become a vessel of honor. Your blessings have been hindered. You have such a great guarantee through the word of Lord God. Even men, when they try to look upon and search what is happening, they cannot find out because what we find in the word of Lord God is simply unique. Therefore, he would say in simple terms, join as disciples, grow up into grammatias, Matthew 13, 52. You have so many great things over there. Joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias, that is what we have been called over here in the church age. But today, dear brethren, people have taken wrong perspective, no communion with God. If you're having communion with God, then you will first diligently come back to search, where is this book of books? If you can ask, a fire being lit upon your home and all the things are destroying, by that catchy fire, the first thing what a man should run in to take is his word of God, his Bible. Because if you have Bible, you have eternity. You have Bible, you have your tears away out. You have Bible, you have the power to live. You have Bible, you have the power to serve. You have Bible, you have the power to suffer. You have Bible, you have the power to die. Protecting his word, honoring his word. That's what he said in Psalms 138 in verse number 2. That he himself has honored his word above his name. Then who are we not to give proper place to Bible doctrine, its valuable honor and position? What else could be for you more important on this earth than the word of God? If any human being who has been born, being made in the image of Lord God to form his glory, the very first perspective of his life in the breath should be to behold the glory of Lord God. No matter what may be the troubles of this life, his entire life energy should be associated to make up discipleship program to be number one priority. The discipleship program should be always number one priority in Christ. That's what we behold is glory and how it has to be day by day, gathering in up. Look upon your prospectives of your life. Have you been really a true Christian? Have you invested today for eternity something? Have you taken up of a value that which could be forever and forever? Really, dear brethren, the road to failure begins when there is no communion, breath by breath, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. This is, in fact, a result of any relationship on this earth as well. If you don't have proper communication, being a wife and husband, if you don't have proper communication, then quite obviously you let go. If you don't have proper thoughts, which has to be token or told, or making up to say what you will do next, or what is your step, then quite obviously there will be a great disaster. Without proper communication, many relationships fail. But here, Lord God, the Father would say, communion with God is broken. That meant to say what, like a baby in the womb, where the umbilical cord has been broken. If you don't have that communion with Lord God, it's like a baby in a womb who has broken up with an umbilical cord, a placenta, whatever you name. So there are no chances of the baby to be survived. There are no chances at all. That umbilical cord is broken. There are no chances of survival. Then how much more it has to be when we have been kept over here on this earth because as Christ our Lord of our God is not of the world, so we are also not of the world. Then how much more we have been called to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath in communion with the word of Lord God, the great book of books, the majestic book, the book which has been not like an ordinary one, which is unique in position for the entire human race because it is the book of glory. There could be no other book that a worldwide can know because it is a book of eternity. Eternity. It's a book of where the people on the earth can never know because it is going to wail out many things and it is going to reveal to you eternity and makes man to look what is his destiny and the future where creator Lord God the Father is going to make up new heavens and new earth and which comes down to man so that in his helpless and sin nature he can find out the things that which could be something of a power in eternity. It's a marvelous book and today people are not happy to honor his word. Pastors have become sheer rats. That's why we have to look how much you are really plowing wickedness, how much you are really reaping iniquity. 
and how much you are really eating the fruit of lies. This great book, which is our life, if you don't have the word of Lord God, there is no way man could be created on earth. That's what Lord our God was teaching. You know the word Yom, what we can find for day in the Hebrew, which has been translated for time, for day, for week, for month, for year. The same word Yom. In Genesis chapter 3, when we look upon, in the cool of the breeze. And there you can find the way how it meant to say Yom or Ruach. And the word Yom is nothing but use your hand to make up your blood to write the word of Lord God. That's what your real purpose of life is as a grammatist in Christ. You have life today, you have seen one more day today, then use your hand to sit and write a copy of the law of Lord God, where with Lord God the Father intention is that you shall not be just as a disciple, you have to grow up into grammatist and in return you have to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's the real intention of Christ. That's what he wants you all to be in the Lord God every time, every day you get. Your great process of Yom. The same thing what to say, Yom Kofer, don, the day of atonement, where once again the people who fear haven't become the grammatious program in the Lord God, then forget about your atonement with Christ. Because the people are not able to realize what is that great atonement which Lord God the Father has given. Because in this atonement day, if we can understand the standards of this word, he would say, emphasizing that it shall be associated with this great standards of making your lives to be grammatious program. Because the word kofair, if we can look, it emphasizes saying that first of all you have to become like a grammatist so that now when you open up your mouth it has to be renovated Bible doctrine. That's what you can look day of atonement, Yom Kopez. If you're really atoning yourselves to Lord God through Christ our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then your first perspective or priority should be to grow up into grammatists, joining as disciples in the Lord God. You really have so many great things to learn. But today many people are not at all happy to learn many great things from the word of Lord God. They forgot what is the word day because the word day, it is nothing but you have given your hand and your blood should say, come, let's write the word of Lord God. That's the same thing what William Carey did. The very first thing what he did, he started a school where people can learn to write first at least their basic languages. Because he knew after his departure, perilous wolves will come. In the perilous times, the revenues wolves will enter. The people who will not value this word of God, but rather they're going to use this word of God for their business. Making money. People are really thinking upon the things of this earthly life for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. They are simply making the life on this earth to produce, to eat something, to make up their life to be associated for something, for their family and for their belly. But they are not giving eternal value to you through the word of God. Because they don't value this book of glory. They don't realize the importance of what we can find over here to stand and to teach as it is called to be the book of eternity, the book of which Lord God the Father has given to know the power, glory, eternity, power. Excuse me. It's a book of glory. It's a book of eternity. It's a book of power. Instead of such book, people are happy to be booked in this earth. <laughs> Rather than taking the book of Bible doctrine, people are making up to themselves, booking into 
the wrong perspectives of life, no communion with God. So make up your hand if you have day to take up, if you know reading and writing, make up to write the word of Lord God as a copy. Because the word kapoor, what you can call for atonement, it meant to say like a grammatical program, opening up your mouth to renovate your thinking like Bible doctrine. That's what you have been called over here, Yom Kopeh. But many people are not at all happy for that life. So dear brethren, we need to look. The words what we can find over here for Yom Kopeh. And if you people are not able to realize why you have been kept and given one more day in the law, to make up your hand to write the word of Lord God, then you can never realize what is the word Salem which has been made in the images of God. In his likeness, Damot, the very reason of your blood is to make sure you're going to get every thought into captivity for Christ. The very reason for your Salem is nothing but to make sure, no matter what may be the pressure, you have to be discipleship orientation. And that's why I've been given this blood. That's the word Salem. But men have forgot what is the right perspective in the Lord. He's able to choose what has been called evil. He doesn't recognize what is excellent in working. What is that great counsel, wonderful in counsel. Man doesn't recognize that. And yet many people don't even realize what are the things pertaining to Christ over here to be on the earth. Because he says over here, emphasizing that they have wrong perspective. So your communion breaks out. When your communion has been broken up, you don't realize what is this book of glory. The book of eternity, the book of power. And the man, when he doesn't know what is the word of Lord God, it's simply as good to say he's dead. He's been accounted to be like, though he's been spiritually alive, we account him to be dead because... His thinking is not been in the process of doctrine at all on this earth. So dear brethren, he says, having the first word, wrong perspective. Lord's first step towards failure came because he was not in communion with God and therefore he had a wrong perspective. He took a step in the wrong direction because the well-watered plain looked like the best deal for him and he did it not take into account that the wicked cities were programmed for destruction. So, the prospect of any Christian out of fellowship with the Lord God is the same. It will be selfish, secular, and short-sighted. The triple S. Selfish, secular, and short-sighted. Why? Because the reasons are that they have been able to look out of fellowship. A Christian who is out of fellowship with the Lord will be the same like Lot because he thought in the wrong direction. The well-watered plain looked like the best deal for him and he did not take into an account that the wicked cities were all the time programmed for destruction. So the place where you find today and you reside, if there is no proper daily teaching of the word of Lord God, consider it to be wicked cities. The same thing today what people are looking. Already a light flooded area, they think they can go and burn out their candle. In those areas, those candles are not needed. Already you have enough of light flooding over there. You require where a candle, where it is darkened. A dark place is require a candle to light up. As you know, you have this watch called to be Timex Indiglo. One of the watch which has been taken of USA patent. In that tower of which it has been taken down by September 11th. The torch of that cell, which is going to give like an indiglo, which shines, which goes to give. If you can find that information in the Wikipedia or somewhere you can look upon in the Google. It says that light has led them to make rescue some people. So the same thing over here as well. Your perspective. In darkness it has to shine, not in the light flooded areas. So here people are thinking, let's go to a country which is better, which is good, which is this, which is that. No. 
The life of you on this earth which Lord God the Father has given is to shine like light luminaries in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations and you can find such nations now all over the world including the so-called Christian countries where USA should be the lead of being the things pertaining to Lord's country in leading them after Romans called to be SPQR, the client nation to God. There also you are able to find many things which are absolutely wrong towards doctrine. The very simple thing, even if you can ask an unbeliever in my country, India, who is following Sanatana Dharma, he would say, no bestiality, no homosexuality, no lesbianism. He would say very simply and very clearly. He would say that is not the design. But in American countries, they love to promote the things pertaining to all mannerism of the things contrary to the word of God. And they think it's advancement. No, not at all. It's sin. It's not at all the things what you can say it's good or great or perfect. But we know very well it's a sin. The same thing over here what we can look. The people who are considering their prospective auto fellowship of Lord God, they will be selfish. They will be secular. They will be short-sighted people. They don't look into the book of eternity. They don't look into the book of glory. They don't look into the book of power. They are very, very short-sighted. They are looking only the things of this earth, what to be done and how to be done. They don't look the things pertaining to eternal glory in the Lord God. So, dear brethren, he said, like Lord, many Christians start down the road to failure when they lift up their eyes and see all the possibilities and opportunities this world has to offer. But they fail to see that this world is programmed for God's judgment. Even in 1 Corinthians 7.21, 7.31, again followed by 1 John 2.17, no Christian in his right mind would buy stock in it. Would you buy a house below a dam that the authorities said was about to collapse? Of course you will not. The same thing. But it... But... That is essentially what some Christians are doing with their lives because of a worldly, natural perspective. They are investing their time and energy in the things that have no eternal value. When you fail communion with Lord God, you are going to find out those things which have no eternal value at all. No eternal value. The very first things what you're going to find on this earth, they will not be into the process of no eternal value. So, dear brethren, many Christians are investing their time and energy in things that they don't have eternal value. A Christian with the wrong perspective is well on his way to a life of spiritual failure. What perspective? With the wrong perspective. What is wrong? That which is contrary to the word of Lord God, whatsoever it may be on the face of the earth. Therefore, Christ, O Lord of God, lived on this earth to provide his everything to the standards of making up to be in the realm of Lord's glory to be shined. Therefore, we can look upon the way how we would say in simple terms that they may behold the glory where I am, that they may be also there. And having such a glorious, glorying life for us in Christ, he would further go to teach and emphasize the things which have been said for us, that your new position in Christ and your new identification in Christ. When you are a new position in Christ, you have been separated from the world. When you are having a new identification with Christ, he would simply emphasize the things teaching to us that you have to put on Christ. Such a great life we have on this earth but we're not able to look upon the standards of the Lord's mind no great life at all so the very first thing we're going to fail wrong perspective what is wrong perspective no communion with Christ what that happens it leads further to teach to us in simple words that they have invested their time and energy in the things which doesn't have eternal value. So every time you need to look and cross-check the time we are investing. Is it in the process of this earth, which is making all to be in the standards of the earth, or it is in the process of this world, where you are going to make up for eternal value? Where is your time and energy being invested? Because Lord God the Father himself has honored his word above his name. 
then how we shall be the people to invest our time in wrong perspectives. If you are investing your time in wrong perspectives, it meant to say you don't have true fear of God. The true love of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ to be shy. And yet, you will never have a testimony, at least like David, in the time of not being in well by Lord God, the Holy Spirit has a testimony towards the people of the Egyptian who has been there, like Akish the king. Only a man, the word Akish, meant to say what is just a man. Just a man gives a testimony about David. He says he's upright, he's top good. And he says further that David has no evil. Again he says he's good and he says he's like a messenger of Elohim. That's the great title a man can give for you on this earth. Your prospects are wrong. Then people would say he's just a nominal conventional Christian. He doesn't know where to invest his time. He doesn't know where to invest his energy. Because they are called to be heavenly citizens. That's what Philippians 3 emphasizes. We are not of the earth. They are called to be something great in the sight of Lord God. They are called to be heavenly citizens in Christ. And we have such a great life in the Lord our God to learn to look upon the standards of thinking on this earth. But what we are doing dear brethren today. What are your prospectives? Where is your life? Such a great Lord of a God who has given us such sort of a great excellence of counseling, such excellence of wonderful working. What are we doing with that? Our prospectives are wrong. The people who have such prospectives of being wrong, the second failure for them, they flirt with the world. The first thing they have a wrong perspective. The second thing, they flirt with the world. And when they're flirting with the world, what happens over here? Lord's second step to failure occurred when he just flirted with the world. He only moved his tents as far as Sodom, says Genesis 13 12. Not into Sodom, but as far as Sodom. Because just in the wrong direction. It is a wrong step to take a job that may involve you in undirection. In it may it, it is a wrong step to take a job that may involve you in unethical practices or to let exciting extracurricular activities take you away from a Christian group. Or he would say to become romantically involved with an irresistible unbeliever. It is only a matter of time before the believer moves into Sodom as Lot did. So here when the people have been not able to give right things in the word of Lord God, they love to flirt with the world. Because this unholy trio, what we can call the world, the flesh and the devil, they are going to make upon for you for having exciting extracurricular activities to be your priorities, unethical practices to be your priorities, and making you all to be romantically involved with an irresistible unbeliever. That's what many people are falling into traps today. Making up your lives to be in such a way of thinking. So he says, the very first thing, he goes on to say, extracurricular activities, unethical practices, and the power which has been given for them romantically, they involve in irresistible unbeliever. So moving towards Saddam. So the word says, he moved his tents as far as Saddam. As we can look upon Saddam and Gomorrah. What you can find there, you can find every sort of sin. So the third step is ensnared by the system over there. The third step that logically follows on the road to failure is becoming ensnared by the system. Sitting in the gate of Saddam may indicate that Loth was trying to bring about city reform. But it also indicates how ensnared he had become. He took angels and fire from heaven to force him out, says Genesis 19, 15-29. 
the ensnared Christian like Lot may not be involved in the grosser sins, but his thinking becomes twisted and distorted because he is out of touch with God. Now that's the word city we can call all the time. Distorted and twisted thinking in a thought process. You know, your umbilical cord of relationship has been broken up. You have been ensnared in that system where there is distorted thinking. The distorted thinking in your life. And today, dear brethren, many people are not aware what sort of a distorted thinking they're going through in this life. And that's what you can understand, such sort of a distorted thinking on this earth. You're ensnared by such a system. And now what happens to the fourth one? He loses everything. First, he has a wrong perspective. He flirts with the world, he's ensnared by that system, and now he loses everything. You know to what extent he loses? Now, when the fire comes from the heaven, he says that he's losing everything, his job, his home, his possessions, his wife. He was able to take his two daughters out of Sodom, but he could not take Sodom out of his daughters. By that we meant to say what the incest relationship. The Ammonites and the Moabites who have been conceived because there have been contrived acts of incest. You know, that's why the father of the family should be very careful in training the children. They might have bought out daughters out of Saddam, but, but, but the city of Saddam has been still residing in their daughters. So he says, Lot's step-by-step -step failure has a had a disastrous effect for him, his family, and finally for all Israel. The story of Lot is a Solomon warning to every Christian, because don't start down the road to spiritual failure. And what is happening over here? Now we are called to be in Christianity as a new position in Christ and new identification with Christ. There is no way you can have some other things on this earth. Your new position, your new identification in the law. But what are you finding today on this earth? No new position in Christ. You are not able to realize what you are and rather what you are taking. You are taking the steps into the standards of what we can call in simple terms. Spiritual failure, road to destruction. But Christ, O Lord of God, wants you all to have that glory. That glory, at least like Akish, only a man. The word meant to say only a man. At least you can give a witness. Yes, you are upright. You are good. You have no evil in you. You have a good in the sense of having to become like a messenger of Elohim on the face of the earth. At least is there anyone can that give you such testimony in Christ? And today, people are not able to realize how they can get back the testimony because they have to break up their fallow grounds. Without breaking up their fallow grounds, they cannot. In Hosea chapter 10, as some morons could love to talk about these words in verse number 12, saying that, so too yourselves in righteousness reap in mercy. That's what they say. But they forgot to tell Break up your fallow ground. The word breaking up is nothing but make up all your vigor and valor and energy to look what has been there in your head. That thinking which is happening in your head, he said, break up that fallow ground. And today many people are not able to realize what is this word near, near is all about. Breaking up your fallow ground. Look upon the things that are going upon to be wrong prospectives. Break them out. Get back to the things that which are right and good in the sight of Lord God the Father. Make it up to be the process of truth of word. Let them be making up the fallow grounds to be once again tilted back. And how it is? He said, seek the Lord God, the Rash, because it is a high time for us when your every thought in your head should be brought into the thought process of Bible doctrine. Therefore, he would say, seek the Lord God. It is a time because your viewpoint should be an authority. So he said, seek the Lord God so that 
He can come and rain upon you what? Righteousness. It's not a rain of water. It's a rain of righteousness. No matter what may be the pressure, you have to make every thought from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun to be rained upon you, which has to be straight and righteous. And what a great thing we have over here for us on this earth to do. Reigning righteousness. How when you break up, when you break up your fallow grounds. And the word over here for fallow grounds is nothing but your brethren as the word near nor. And what it is, that which has been untilled, that which has been not ploughed. But we have to look upon the things pertaining to say the pressure upon their head, no matter whatever may be in the vigor and valor, it has to be renovated in Christ. Such a great thing you have over here. But today you can look. How many people are simply quoting the first part of the verse saying that sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. But how you can get yourself to sow when you are able to dig and take a viewpoint of life to be renovated in dark rain. And if you are not able to reap that which has been called from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, no matter what may be the pressure upon your head, you have to reap it. So he said sow yourselves to righteousness and then he said reap in mercy, kasad. The wall of fortification, no matter what, may be the pressure to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So, dear brethren, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. And then he said, break up. Ne er nur, ne er no. Break up. Anything that goes against the word of Lord God, break up. So today you have to break up the things pertaining to your road of spiritual failure. The four things. The wrong perspective, make it right. Moving into the lot as he moved into Sodom, get out of the principles of life where people are not having to be in a believing community where they go to take up number one priority for doctrine. The third one he goes to say, being ensnared by the system, wake up from there. Because people are happy to be ensnared by the system, but he would say, Wake up from that system. Before losing everything, wake up to the reality in Christ. And what a great thing we have to learn in the word of Lord God accurately. Because he said, they behold my glory. Therefore you have been given the book of glory, which is Bible. The book of eternity, which is Bible. The book of power, which is also the Bible. Therefore, if you want to look upon the glory which you need to behold, theorio, the Greek word, it meant to say first, ra'a, to inspect, to make sure that your head has been renovated to get LF energy into your thought process and Kazakh orientation, which is to build a wall of fortification to dig and take the Lord's mind accurately every day. Behold his glory so that we can be the people where he has given and he has given for Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world. So we shall also bear the same glory in Christ. Therefore your first new position, separation from the world, your true identification on this earth, which has been called again for us to be the process of what the word of Lord God calls into the thinking of Christ. So dear brethren, at least the way how King David could have a testimony before Akish, the enemy king, can we have the same? That we are upright, we are good, we have no evil. Satan tries to test us. No matter what, are we able to give priority for doctrine? Just surrender yourselves to Christ and to His Word. Have a breath-by-breath breath fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you can look and learn the standards of the Lord's mind very accurately. That's what your life is all about. Have communion with God. Have your right perspective, which is to take in the Word of Lord God. Have communion with God every time. Have communion with God. What 
dagar här i Indianis ut. No proper communion with Lord God. No proper communion in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And yet, Lord God the Father gives you one more chance to learn his mind. Make sure you have to behold his glory. That's the desire of Lord God the Father, as he said in Numbers chapter 14, in verse number 21, that the earth shall be filled with his glory. And dear, dear brethren, how many days more you want to be far away from the reality of the truth in Christ, you realize. And which way you want to go, you realize. Because you have been baptized in Christ, put on Christ and into the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to look and to search His righteousness and His kingdom. In the name of the Trinity being baptized, first the Father's desire for you, the purity and the purification of His perfection, as I said in Matthew 5, 48, the confession, confirmation of the image of Christ, identified with Christ in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, whose constant guidance is to enlighten you to know the Word of God. Being baptized in such trinity, how we can take road to failure of our spiritual lives. Because you don't know what is breath by breath communion with the Holy Spirit of God. And when you don't know that, eventually seek lies rather than truth. The enemy gave a witness because he was though in the Egyptian field. He says, you are an upright man to David, in 1 Samuel 29. You are a good man, you have no evil. And he says, you are a good man and you are called to be the messenger of Elohim. And today, where is our testimony in the Lord? Satan would mock and laugh and tell, these are failures. In spite of giving to us the player of Baltimore privileges, in spite of giving to us the book of power, in spite of giving to us to learn his mind, sanctifying through the truth, people are not sanctified by the word of Lord God. Then how they can be what Lord God the Father intends them to be on this earth? When you don't have breath in your nostrils, you are dead. More than that for your inner man, the breath is the word of Lord God for your soul and spirit. And dear brethren, how many days more you still want to reject the word of Lord God, you think, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost led us to the place of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. The unbearable pain of Lord God, which is incurable for making man who hasn't been able to grow up into grammatics in the sight of Lord God, always pricks the true pastor teacher to make every believer to be as a disciple and to grow up into grammatics and in return go and make disciples of all the nations by shining forth, by holding the word of Lord God in your hand in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations where you have been baptized in Trinity for the standards of becoming, what we can call in simple words, the glory to be behold in the image of Christ, where he is, so we also be there. And that if you don't understand these things, let Lord God help you. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the fellowship of learning more and more, breath by breath, in the standards of his mind. So which way you want to go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us so very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace must grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine that with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teaches the grace master care to Satan Lagan. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the Dharma Truma witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma Truma witnesses in real infinity, followed by the Bible in our hands. The number two Dharma Truma witnesses are hearers. 
If there are no hearers, dear Lord, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, let us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for this privilege of Lord to learn your truth. We pray the mentoring minister of Lord God the Holy Ghost to challenge us and to behold your glory, for which you have called us in eternity past. You have made man to look upon for your glory, as you said in Isaiah 43 7. But man on the face of the earth, o Lord, has taken a wrong route, a route of spiritual failure rather than making up his life to be baptized in Christ having to look and realize his position of a new one in Christ, his identification with Christ, so that he can come back and look upon the baptism of the Trinity, conforming to the perfection of God the Father, conforming to the conformation of the image of Christ on this earth, and day by day communion in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to learn pale wonders of his word. To such an extent, O Lord, you have given us such great things for us to occupy on this earth, that man is able to seek and search the stupidities of this life rather than looking upon the word of Lord God. Being grateful and thankful for the prospect of your mind on this earth, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge and to bless us by this message and prepare us to look upon your glory as we come back to be witnessing of your word on this earth and fill the earth with thy glory wherever we go shining as light luminaries in the midst of such powers and crooked nations of generations. To this section, Father, we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord, the Lord God the Holy Spirit challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord, Amen.